Yeah. But back. Back at it. And we are back at it on a Sunday, fun day, Sunday, fun day. Sunday, fun day, Sunday, fun day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So, That's hey, up, look, y'all. I want to do, see what y'all think about. So, Milton Friedman, understanding inflation. So, I'm curious to see this. Let's go. The Sierra Nevadas in California, 10,000 feet above sea level. In the winter, temperatures drop to 40 below zero. In the summer, the place bakes in the thin mountain air. In this unlikely spot, the town of Bodie sprang up. Bodie. In its day, Bodie was filled with prostitutes, drunkards, and gamblers part of the colorful history of the American West. You could tell this came out, baby, maybe this year. Okay. Look how new this looks. New? <laughs> you she was like, yeah, yeah, it does look new. No, that doesn't. No. Let me see, make sure. Is there any higher this pixelation? Like more like the 80s? I would say, I'd say maybe 70s, 80s. A century ago, this was a town of 10,000 people. What brought them here? Gold. If this were real gold, people would be scrambling for it. A series of gold strikes throughout the West brought people from all over the world, all kinds of people. They came here for one purpose and one purpose only. To strike it rich, quick. But in the process, they built towns, cities, in places where nobody would otherwise have dreamed of building a city. Like Las Vegas. Gold built these cities. And when the gold was exhausted, the cities collapsed and became ghost towns. Many of the people who came here ended up the way they began, broken, unhappy. But a few struck it rich. For them, gold was real wealth. But was it for the world as a whole? People couldn't eat the gold. They couldn't wear the gold. They couldn't live in houses made of gold. Because there was more gold, they had to pay a little more gold to buy goods and services. The pri- That's crazy. It was so much gold that it wasn't as valuable. Mm. Hmm. Where is my DeLorean? Take me back to the past. Right. So I can load the car up with that and break it here. Yeah. This is of things in terms of gold went up at tremendous cost at sacrifice could you imagine a big piece of gold and be like huh no gold <laughs> oh my god and then that same Ooh. that same ditch of gold would change your whole trajectory for, for, for 10 generations yeah lives people dug gold out of the bowels of the earth what happened to that gold right eventually at long last it was transported to distant places only to be buried again under the ground. Wow. This time, in the vaults of banks throughout the world. To it reach value. There's hardly anything that hasn't been used for money. Rock salt in Ethiopia, brass rings in West Africa, cowrie shells in Uganda, even a toy cannon. Anything can be used as money. Wow. Crocodile money in Malaysia. Absurd, isn't it? Crocodile money. That beleaguered minority of the population that still smokes may recognize this stuff as the raw material from which their cigarettes are made. But in the early days of the colonies, long before the United States was established, this was money. It was a common money of Virginia, Maryland, and the Carolinas. It was used for all sorts of things. The legislature voted that it could be used legally to pay taxes. It was used to buy food, clothing, and housing. Indeed, one of the most interesting sights was to see the husky young fellows at that time lug a hundred pounds of Cobain. down to the docks to pay the costs of the passage of the beauteous young ladies who had come over from England to be their brides. 
Milton looked like, I ain't gonna lie to you, Milton looked like he is in the woods and he has a um, a new form of um, Jesus camp. <laughs> Come in, everybody. Lick these plants. Stop You'll die it. right now, but the Lord wants it. He makes me think of George Burns. Not me, maybe. <laughs> Bill kind of got me thinking like an old school cult leader. Um, I don't think so. No. He makes me think of George Burns. George Burns, what? City Flick? George Burns was in what? He was in God, the movie God. Remember? George Burns, the little short white guy with the glasses like him. Real short. Danny DeVito? Now, you know how money is. There's a tendency for it to grow, for more and more of it to be produced. And that's what happened with this tobacco. As more tobacco was produced, there was more money. And as always, when there's more money, prices went up. Mm -hmm. Inflation. Indeed, at the very end of the process, prices were 40 times as high in terms of tobacco as they had been at the beginning of the process. Okay. And as always, when inflation occurs, people complained. Mm -hmm. And as always, the legislature tried to do something. And as always, to very little avail. They prohibited certain classes of people from growing tobacco. They tried to reduce the total amount of tobacco grown. They required people to destroy part of their tobacco. But it did no good. Okay. Finally, many people took it into their own hands and they went around destroying other people's tobacco fields. That was too much. Yeah. And they passed a law making it a capital offense, punishable by death, to destroy mm -hmm. somebody else's tobacco. Oh, wow. Gresham's Law, one of the oldest laws in economics, was well illustrated. Gresham's that law law. Says that law says that cheap money drives out dear money, and so it was with tobacco. Cheap Anybody who had a debt to pay, of course, tried to pay it in the worst quality of tobacco he had. Mm -hmm. He saved the good tobacco to sell overseas for hard money. The result was that bad money drove out good money. Finally, almost a century after they had started using tobacco as money, they established warehouses in which tobacco was deposited in barrels certified by an inspector according to his views as to its quality and quantity. And they issued warehouse certificates, which people s gave from one to another to pay for the bills that they accumulated. These pieces of green printed paper are today's counterparts of those tobacco certificates, wow. except that they bear no relation to any commodity. The fact is that most... Because so much of it is made that it's backed by hopes and dreams now and fun backing. It's probably, I, I, I bet you the U.S. dollar is backed by one big piece of paper that say, I owe you on it. Stop it. I just <laughs> realized you look like a um, a smart bodybuilder with your, not that you don't look smart, but with your glasses, like a Poindexter bodybuilder, chocolate. Just had to say that. I know, I digress. You're right. They do have a lot of paper and they print it. I've always wondered, like, how can we ever run out of money technically if they have the paper and they can just put it in the machine and print the money. Where's the value on it? I remember I watched this, I don't know if it was a documentary or whatever I looked at, but they were talking about the, um, what's the name of the bank where the money comes from? I know. The Federal Reserve? Yeah, the Federal Reserve, how it's owned by, it's owned by people. So the government doesn't yeah. own the Federal Reserve Correct. Bank. Someone it's else private. <laughs> owns the government the money. I was thinking. How do they get the paper to print the money? And when do they say, okay, we need to print more money today? What I would, I, right now, Best thing you could do, this what I see is, is, is having our big home desert level. Well, you know, some stay on track, stay on track. Well, so, the best thing I'm saying, I think you have enough guns and you have property and you have all the stuff to use that back. Because eventually that's going to fail. It's going to be nothing. Remember when we saw that movie and the guy had all that, I had all, he was like, man, look at all this cash I find. It had been world destruction. He was like, where are you going to use it? He was like, yeah, you're right. Junk. Right. Watch. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, of course, while it's in rotation and it's relative and we are we still using it, it needs to be. Yeah. 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 Used to the best of the ability. But so what he's saying so far, I'm getting is that there's always going to be inflation. You yep. just need to be able to know how to navigate. Yeah. When inflation comes. Right. Yeah. People enjoy the early stages of the inflationary process. Britain in the swinging 60s, there was plenty of money around. Business was brisk, jobs were plentiful, and prices had not yet taken off. Everybody seemed happy at first. 
Yeah. But by the early 70s, as the good times rolled along, prices started to rise more and more rapidly. Soon, some of these people were going to lose their yeah. jobs. We have got it the party was coming to an end. The twist. The story is much the same in the United States, only the process started a little later. We've had one inflationary party after another, yet we still can't seem to avoid them. How come? Before every election, our representatives would like to make us think we're getting a tax break. And they're able to do it. He like, I swear he gonna pause and say, and that's bull crap. <laughs> And that's bull. While at the same time actually raising our taxes because of a bit of magic they have in their kit bag. That magic is inflation. They reduce the tax rates, but the taxes we have to pay go up mm. because we are automatically shoved into higher brackets by the effect of inflation. A neat trick, taxation without representation. Mm. The more I work, it seems like the more they take off me. I know if I work an extra day or two extra days, what they take in federal income tax alone is, is almost doubled because it apparently puts you in a higher income tax bracket and it takes more off you. Bob Crawford lives with his wife and three children in a suburb of Pittsburgh. They're a fairly average American family. Don't slam the door, Daphne. Okay. All right. What are you doing? Making your favorite dish. Yeah. We went to the Crawfords' home after he'd spent a couple of days working out his federal and state income taxes for the year. For our benefit, he tried to estimate all the other taxes he had paid as well. In the end, though, he didn't discover much that will surprise anybody. Inflation is going up. Everything's getting more expensive. No matter what you do, you get... See, that's why you got to have a business or you got to have a um, nonprofit to where to move your move your things a little bit differently with your business but because it will it will eat your neck off but working for someone else it is not making your dream come true absolutely it's not only making their dream come look how true stressed he is feeling you know what what they need even mm -hmm. though it is providing you income to yeah. survive but that's what it is just about survival so if you want excess then just working for somebody else ain't gonna bring you excess the person, that person that's getting the blessing with the tax break is the person that, that he works for, the mm -hmm. company he works for. Exactly. They're getting the blessing with the tax break. Right. As soon as you walk out of the house, everything's going up. Your gas bills keep going up. Electric bills, uh, your gasoline. Uh, you can name a thousand things that I are going up. Just everything's going sky sense. high. Stop it. Your food. My wife goes to the, to the grocery store we used to live mm -hmm. on, say, Sixty dollars or fifty dollars every two weeks just for our basic food. Wow! Now it's eighty or ninety dollars every two. Weeks. It was like sixty dollars. Now we own sixty-six dollars. Oh my God! Who gonna do? I bet you they gave. I'm telling. That from even when I was a single person. Let me tell you. No, I didn't either. Cause you know what I'll be doing? I never have a full, out, accurate calculation of my groceries because I was blowing all my money. Eating, eating out. out and going to the clubs. Okay. So when I'm going yeah. to the store, it might have been ninety dollars, but it was. Some, but I, I probably spent 300 400 on tr food boxes that are in the garbage can. Yeah. It you was know? about 60 for, It was about 65 maybe 75 for me a week, even when I was single. But it depends on if I ate fish or not, you know, or if I got um, uh, another type of seafood, you know. So it was like, okay. I remember wow. when I first met you, and you were getting groceries, and I saw your grocery bill, I was like, she is crazy. Come on, let's go out and get something to eat. Look, I, that's the first place I went to in this kitchen. When I was in this kitchen, let me see what this man, let me see if he's cooking that. I opened his refrigerator. I said, look at this one pot with these dried up ramen noodles and stuff of those you may have had. And I had some, some condiments. Over, and I had some overcooked chicken. Some condiments. That like, oh, if you okay. eat it, it was going to be nasty because I done took it out, the, out, out from thawing out and put it back in the fridge because I don't really have time. I'm like, no worries. I'll be the one to be cooking. <laughs> Things are just, they're going out of sight as far as expense to live on. Well, he wouldn't, it's hard to say it's now. getting tough. And, and, and the, it seems like every month it gets worse. I bet wow. you gas is 62 cents. That's a mindset. So imagine you at 62 cents and then you're thinking about how, 
and you could see how gas really goes down in 2023 from 196. You're gonna be like, oh my god, oh my god. It's a mindset. You're gonna everybody's gonna walk. It's a mindset. Why, why adjust your mindset to conform with the way things are to accept what is when you can create what you want? Everybody ain't on that though. I mean, I understand, but you know they need to be on that. They need to, but need everybody to ain't going to be on that. You know, why would you want to fix yourself in this little video box when you can ex exceed well beyond the box? No, thank you. That's for a mindset that... Of growth. Of growth. You can't, but well, you can't say that. Some people just, they don't want that. You can't, you can't make that so assessment. that's, that's stagnation. That. No, but a person might just want to be able to find a good gig and just stay that. So that's lateral. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with being lateral because when, when you're lateral, I mean, let's just say. You know, it's a little judgy. It's not judgy. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's judgy, y'all. I feel like we were put here to grow. Every human, you know, living, every living thing is supposed to grow. Mm -hmm. You're not going to stay the same forever. Animals don't stay the same age forever. They continue to grow just like human beings. We continue to grow. But if you choose to do things to help you be better then some of these other issues you, you're going to look at different because you're not focused on the lack you're yeah. focused on being better because you're not going to be able to change inflation you can't control it but you can't control yourself in your situation right maybe that's what i need to say and i don't know where it's going to end at the end of the day i've spent nearly six thousand dollars of my earnings on taxes that leaves a month where let's see me with a total of twelve thousand dollars to live on. Woo, Jesus! I, I swear it must rent must have been seventeen dollars um, or one hundred and fifty dollars. You got he had three kids. He said they live, they do about ninety dollars every two weeks. So you calculate ninety times that's one hundred and eighty dollars in groceries they spend a month. Rent must be about five hundred dollars. It can't has to be, and then the kids. You know, okay, in that I, time. I want to hear what he has to say, and I don't want to lose my train of thought. I'm not trying to cut you off, but I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, who wants to live just who? Who wants to live a life where you're barely making it? And that's what I hear from him. It's like he's barely making it. You can't control inflation. You're not going to be able to control the recession. No. What you should, what you're going to be able to do is control how you can respond to the recession and ride the wave. Yeah. And not suffer as much of a loss as somebody else could. Yeah. Uh-uh. That might seem like a lot of money, but five, six years ago, I was earning $12,000. How does taxation without representation really affect how much the Crawford family has left to spend after it's paid its income taxes? Well, in 1972, Bob Crawford earned $12,000. Okay. Some of that income was not subject to income tax. Okay. After paying income tax on the rest, he had this much left to spend. Six years later, he was earning $18,000 a year. By 1978, the amount free from tax was larger. Hmm. But he was now in a higher tax bracket. Mm -hmm. So his taxes went up by a larger percentage than his income. However, those dollars weren't worth anything like as much. Even his wages, let alone his income after taxes, hadn't kept up with inflation. His buying power was lower than before. That is taxation without representation in practice. We had a number of you brothers that are sitting here today that were with us on that committee. And uh, I'd like to tell you one of the things... There are many traditional scapegoats blamed for inflation. How often have you heard inflation blamed on labor unions for pushing up wages? Workers, of course, don't agree. But, fellas, this is not true. This is subterfuge. This is a myth. Your wage rates are not creating inflation. And he's right. That's that whole mindset back in the day of the man pushing on our weight, but we just didn't know that. I bet you it cost you pennies to start a business back then, probably pennies. And it's still not, it's, it's still pennies to start a business now. So it probably taught you even less pennies back then, but the mindset, you got to think back in them times, it was not preaching about being your own business that was not but it I, it was all about getting you a good job and taking care of your family and getting you a house 
The whole American Dream scheme, that's what that was about back in the day, 100%. But you still had that small percent of people who thought beyond average. Absolutely. Because being a multi-millionaire, billionaire, billionaire, the growth mindset is nothing new under the sun. It's always been around from day one. Even during the time of Jesus, you got kings, queens, yep. and, and people. I mean, so it's never, it's always been set up that but way. But in biblical times, kings were appointed king. They were became kings through birthright. It wasn't just because, or, or you did something. They conquered. You did something that made you a king. Okay. Or, or they conquered. Right. Like Joshua, when they went to, when they went, when they okay. crossed the Jordan, they conquered all that, all the land. Well, not everybody uh, was a king, but you still had your class systems back then during his time yeah you had people who were rich you had people who were in the middle and then you had people who were lower and yeah. then you also had slaves yeah indentured servants which so you still have to this day right and then scratch, the, top. Is, scratch is, my tricep right now this the same tricep this the same why that's a, that, that's the, this is the same mindset right. is that why allow yourself to be suppressed when you have the ability to change the they situation? don't have that that's not what's pre preached there how even though if it wasn't preached you still have the capability of wanting more for yourself yeah and only a certain percentage got out and did that okay but i guess because it seemed probably too far-fetched you had no internet then I, I know and i was thinking that too i was like okay you didn't have the internet but you still had the capability of seeing there was tv tv was all i mean tv was around why seeing somebody smoke a philip morrison <laughs> please they have movies they had shows. They had things to make people think outside of the box, even back then. Yeah. I love Lucy. Stop. Higher wages are mostly a result of inflation rather than a cause of it. Economists in this country. Indeed. The impression that unions cause inflation arises partly because union wages are slow to react to inflation. And then there's pressure to catch up. On a day-to-day basis, trying to represent our own members. That, in fact, is not the case. Uh, not only can we not play catch up, we can't even maintain a wage rate what you got enough. commensurate with the cost of living that's going up in this country. And that's what's always crazy to me, man. You work in a diet and then they print that so much of that in a day. That it blow your your eyeballs out when you saw how much of that you working for that little bit that they print through a machine, and then how much of it they have to throw burning trash, and you were killing yourself for that. That feels like slave That's to me. That's crazy. That feels like slave. How do you get a job to work at the um? I don't want to call it the Federal Reserve. The thing. the system was created for you to work under it. What's the name of it? When they house the money. Federal Reserve Bank. Federal, okay, that's right. Federal Reserve Bank. Okay. How do you get a job? No, I'm saying to be the one, the ones to, it's because it's certain, it's a certain number of men that were, it was all men that worked inside to be able to say, okay, we have this amount of money. This is how much this, you send this millions to this organization or to this whatever. How do you get in that position? They were all white men. But oh, I, absolutely. I, yeah, I, I wondered how they got to be in that that role what was the certification for that to be able to where you oversee the money uh-huh because those probably get paid well but that's still so funny man you think about you making back then what was probably really top level food chain what make eighty thousand dollars you probably top level top level when somebody making 12. i just when i was looking at that documentary i was like how in the world did they get this position yeah curious anyway okay the reason we have inflation in the United States, or for that matter, anywhere in the world, is because these pieces of paper and the accompanying book entries, or their counterparts in other nations, are growing more rapidly than the quantity of goods and services produced. The truth is, inflation is made in one place and one place only, here in Washington. This is the only place where there are presses like this that turn out these pieces of paper we call money. This is a place where the power resides to determine how rapidly the amount of money shall increase. You like, hmm, I could put a couple of these in my pocket right now. Exactly. Stop. Wait a minute. 
<laughs> hey, what man. What happened to all that noise? That's what would happen to inflation if we stopped letting the amount of money grow. But you can see how he looked up. He was like, what just happened? So <laughs> rapidly. This is not a new idea. It's not a new cure. It's not a new problem. It's happened over and over again in history. When it stops. Sometimes inflation has been cured this way on purpose. Sometimes it's happened by accident. During the Civil War, the North, late in the Civil War, overran the place in the South where the printing presses were setting up, where the pieces of paper were being turned out. Prior to that point, the South had had a very rapid inflation. If my memory serves me right, something like 4% a month. It took the Confederacy something over two weeks to find a new place where they could set up their printing presses and start them going again. During that two-week period, inflation came to a halt. After the two-week period, when the presses started running again, inflation started up again. Mm. It's that clear, that straightforward. Fix my chair. Scratch my butt. That's it. Wait. These are Wait. man made. That's a different one. So Go back. I really feel like that's not something to be even stressed about. It's like worrying about the price of gas. Well, people do that all day. I know that. You see that? But A can of peas went up 75 cents. If, you, oh. if, you're going to start, if you drive <laughs> a gas-fueled car, worrying about what the cost yeah. of gas is, I was the culprit should of that. never even be a thought. I mean, I was, too. I was the culprit must, of that. And I'm going to say that I was, too. Nah, like me. But I maybe had... not. But the point is, I wasn't going to drive to two and three gas stations to, to find to find gas cheaper. It was like, oh, this is how much gas is. But I knew I was going to go to work, and I knew I was going to be moving around. So I just need to get gas. Let me tell you. You remember when I, I remember the first time I had a fit about thinking about gas when you remember in, in a car note when I got that truck when I got my truck that ram that car note that car note was like 380 and I was tossing and turning and think about paying my car note and paying for the gas the truck to gas up and I think gas in Georgia at the time was like two something uh -huh. long story short time turn around I don't I don't really consider that anymore but I but I um no, nah, let me stop. I still be thinking about the gas. <laughs> I had them. I have plenty. Jordan, no, I go to the gas station. She's like, fill up. I'm like, man, I'm about to do halfway. <laughs> because that's an old, it is non-productive. Like, man, I just put it toward it. I'm just only going around here. That's an old non-productive program. And where I was going with with you know the inflation thing is that's not something that people can control. So why even stress yourself out about it? You're not. It's, it's going to go up, and you're going to have the items that you need. You're still going to buy. So why but, not? But create? I do have this. I do have this thing about you go get the biggest gas guzzling thing. The price change. Now you tripping, complaining, and frustrated, aggravated. Well, so you got to stop doing that. People got to stop making them choices now. You know good and well some change. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. Don't do it. Yeah. So and that's my thing. It's like okay. It's already written in history. About every ten years we have a recession, the market crashes. Mm -hmm. Inflation is. is we had the ten. We had the ten year mark. I went ten year. Can can inflation has been consistent over time and it's going to continue. So what do you do? You prepare. You, you get yourself in a position where it's not a stress. That's just how I feel about it. It's like oh, my, I was getting stressed out just sitting here thinking about it. And how he was explaining it, it was like the man at the table. I'm like he he had me he had me feeling like oh man. But I feel like like Jay Z said man a while ago. I'm not you know I'm not saying I'm listen to you know quoting certain things but i am going to quote this one he said you can't buy it twice you can't afford it and so now i really see that if you can't buy that vehicle two times if you can't afford to note on that twice you can't afford the vehicle because that means you are just enough to take to have that vehicle mm -hmm. not even the maintenance and all if, the other stuff if you rent a place that says 2500 dollars, but you can't spend five thousand you can't afford it and then, so then that's the key. Always know that you need to be able to get that spot two times or that buy that item, be able to afford it two times without no problem. Then you can afford it. 
Yeah. Some people have big trucks, big truck notes, big gas, and you can't afford it. You got to park them up. And I think if the person doesn't really like the situation, only you can change it because inflation, gas prices, the price of anything else is is out of your control. Yeah. And I'm a I'm a gun loving, truck driving country boy. <laughs> but if certain things is is um not where I'm gonna put my budget, then I just won't buy that. So I won't buy it. You get the understanding of inflation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. ah! All right, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. But don't. <coughs> I joke, don't tell. Like, comment, subscribe. But don't take a nose dive. But comment down in the section below if you want some more. See you in the next video, guys. Green. Love you. Bye, guys. Thanks for your support.